This is Barry Zalma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's newsletters, Alma's insurance fraud letter for June 1, 2024. This volume 28, issue 11, is created as the 28th year of publication dedicated to those who are involved in reducing the effect of insurance fraud on the American public. Ziffel is published 24 times a year by Claim School and is written by me. It is provided free to anyone who visits the site at uh, Zelma's Insurance Fraud Letter. The issue contains among the following articles. First, the scope of loss. When dealing with a potential fraudulent first-party property loss, it is essential that the investigation into the claim is thorough and prompt. To do a thorough investigation of a property loss, it is essential that the insured and the company's adjuster agree to a complete scope of loss so that the investigation into the amount of the loss is prepared and agreed to immediately. In a loss to structures or contents, the scope of loss is generated at the first meeting between the adjuster and the insured. The scope of loss is where both parties agree on the categories of the property damaged. You can read the full 26-page issue and the complete article at the link provided in the blog in Adobe PDF format. Then there's articles on more McClenny Mosley and Associates issues, with this the 29th installment of the saga of McClenny Mosley and Associates and its problems with the federal courts in the state of Louisiana and what appears to be an effort to profit from what some magistrate and district judges indicate may be criminal conduct to profit from insurance claims relating to hurricane damage to the public of the state of Louisiana. The notations start with an April 26, 2024 uh, article about MMA-generated lawsuits that were dismissed by the courts. You can read the full article and all of the machinations of MMA since the last issue of Ziffel at the link provided. Then there's an article called Insureds Are Made More Equal Than Insurers, where the California Court of Appeal extended the meaning of a statute to make the insured more powerful than insurers at an examination under oath. As George Orwell explained in his novel Animal Farm, we are all equal but some are more equal than others. For example, in Vladimir Mishanyankin v. Nationwide Mutual, the California Court of Appeals on January 30, 2024, decided over the dissent of the presiding judge that the insured in a disputed claim is more equal than the insurer with regard to the examination under oath. You can read the full article at the link provided in Adobe PDF format. Mm. Then there's an article about the new book, the Compact Book of Adjusting Property Claims, 4th edition, which is available in Kindle, paperback, and hardback formats. The 4th edition contains updates and clarifications from the first three editions, plus additional material for the working adjuster and the insurance coverage lawyer. You could read the full article and the full 26-page issue of Ziffel in Adobe PDF format at the link provided. Then we have articles about health insurance fraud convictions. 
noting that the federal prosecutors and courts have been very busy prosecuting health insurance fraud since the last issue of Ziffel, starting with an article about a doctor, one of the top prescribers of opioids in Massachusetts, was sentenced. Dr. Olreandru James Oladipu of Kenton, Massachusetts, an orthopedic surgeon who prosecutors say was one of the top prescribers of opioid drugs in the state of, and was sentenced in federal court in Boston for his role in a health care fraud scheme. Oladipu was sentenced by U.S. District Judge Allison D. Burroughs to 16 months in prison, followed by one year of supervised release. And in December of 2023, Oladipu was convicted by a federal jury to 10 counts of health care fraud. You can read the full article and the dozens of other health insurance fraud convictions at the link provided in the blog. Then we mention my newest book, Property Investi Investigation Checklists, Uncovering Insurance Fraud, 14th edition, which is available from Thomson Reuters, and you can read about the book at the link provided in the blog. Then there's the article on other insurance fraud convictions, starting with an article about a Tennessee man who was sentenced to over three years in federal prison for crop insurance fraud. David Garrett Mannion, 61, of Lafayette, Tennessee, was sentenced to three years and six months in federal prison, followed by three years of supervised release, and was ordered to pay $3.5 million in restitution for defrauding the federal crop insurance program. According to court documents, Mannion was convicted for defrauding the federal crop insurance program between 2016 and 2022. Mannion also had a prior 2016 conviction for defrauding the federal crop insurance program, and as part of that case, Mannion agreed to a five-year debarment from the federal crop insurance program administered by the United States Department of Agriculture Risk Management Agency. While that case was being resolved, however, Mannion devised a scheme under which other family members applied for and received crop insurance for tobacco that was farmed by and belonged to Mannion. In addition to $3.5 million in criminal restitution, Mannion agreed to pay the risk management agency nearly $5.5 million to resolve other outstanding issues. You can read the article and multiple convictions of other than health insurance fraud in the full 26-page issue at the link provided. This video was adapted from my blog, Zelma on Insurance, and from the newsletter, Zelma's Insurance Fraud Letter, prepared by me and produced by Claim School Incorporated. Please tell your friends and colleagues about the blog and the newsletter and the videos and let them subscribe to the blog and the videos. If you're interested in more detail about insurance, insurance claims, insurance law, and insurance fraud, please consider subscribing for a very small fee to my Substack publication. And if you watch these videos, please click on the like button at YouTube or the thumbs up button on rumble.com. Thank you for your attention.